Generation X. I am looking forward to doing a little reading with you. I pulled some Oracle cards. It's been a while since I did a Gen X, although maybe not that long. But I've been learning about astrology and um, as a way of understanding what a whole generation can have in common. And so people born in what is considered Generation X, um, we have, like, so if you run your natal chart, you can get a free natal chart. This is mine. I've taken lots of notes all over it, trying to understand this stuff. You can get a free natal chart uh, at several sites. I like Cafe Astrology, um, but there's multiple sites where you can just get a free natal chart. Cafe Astrology will give you like a 25 page document that will really give you like, it's a template based reading of your character. Um, but we, in Generation X, we had um, Uranus, the planet of revolution, um, was in Libra. It's in Libra on my chart here. Um, and we also saw Pluto on the cusp of Libra and uh, Virgo. And we see, we see Neptune in Sagittarius. So these are the slow-moving planets. All the other planets moved quite a bit faster, sun, moon as well, um, through the different constellations. But uh, theoretically, our commonalities as a generation would in part be shaped by, you know, the context into which we're born historically and culturally, um, class, race, et cetera, et cetera. But like these big generational on a global scale would produce a generation that is supposedly quite oriented towards social justice and also made up of dreamy idealistic artists um, that dreamy um, neptunian uh, in libra well, and libra also likes freedom and justice balance uh, the scales of justice are libra's symbol um, so just like a quick little look at something that i'm kind of I'm learning about now as a way of really understanding why we are, why it is appropriate to describe us as a generation um, with common sensibilities and aspirations. I just did a reading for metal dogs, people born in 1970, and you can look even on an even more refined level at planets that, like Jupiter and Uranus, um, that move uh, more quickly. And I would encourage you also to look at where Chiron is, the wounded healer in your chart. Um, mine is in Aries. And it might take, it takes 50 years for Chiron to move and every nine years um, to make a full circle. And then every nine years it shifts sign. Um, with the retrogrades, it complicates it. But this is very fun and interesting to look at that um, as a way of, you know, really giving ourselves a language and symbols with which to relate to one another. And I think because of being in this isolation that we've been in out of necessity with COVID, there has been like this wonderful flourishing of ways to connect with and know the earth and our fellow humans. Um, and, and also it's seemingly with the cosmos. It's a, there's a real uptick in um, interest in astrology and tarot. Um, and certainly for me, it's been kind of uh, wonderful to be able to connect with other humans this way. Um, to my 40 subscribers and whoever kind of just wafts through this, um, this channel, Little Dog Tarot. Okay, so I have shuffled the Guardian of the Night Tarot, and I'm going to pull, and I've split the deck, I'm going to pull five cards. Uh, we're going to pull a release, an embrace, a revisit, because we've just had Mercury in retrograde, and now it's going back over the ground that it revisited. So it's a revisit of what we revisited. Um, that's what that one will be. Hidden influences and then potential future outcomes. And as I like to think about it, that's the future that we could have if we choose to take the journey that the cards suggest here. So the first card, what we want to release, some kind of ending, the tower. A surprise doesn't have to be bad. Um, it usually 
um, is kind of a scary experience because you weren't expecting it. And very often a tower comes because it needed to and you didn't do it yourself. Um, yeah. I pulled some oracle cards here too, so I'm just going to see how they relate to this. Wow. You're supposed to embrace this ending, this very painful ending, the Ten of Swords, which in this deck is um, really, it, I feel this in my body. Um, look at, though, I'm really seeing today all of the fireflies, all of the possibilities of the next life, right? So Ten of Swords is the end. It is a painful ending. Um, here a bird mourns her little egg fell out of the nest and cracked open before the little bird was ready. So it suggests something that didn't get completed in a way. Um, you're supposed to embrace this grief here. This is definitely coming up in your oracle cards here, Generation X. Um, so we need, are revisiting um, our sense of abandonment. The Five of Pentacles. So this is a tough reading already. We've got a tower, a ten of swords, and a five of pentacles. This is um, really, the, okay, let me just tell you that the oracle predicted that we need to do some time in the darkness, some shadow work here. Um, there is release on the other end of it. A letting go of whatever we need to let go of. And there is also a reminder to begin in gratitude. Remember, before you do your shadow work, note, what do I have? How content am I? Do I have a big spirit guide that is holding me through this? You know, how am I held and carried and protected um, through this brave work that is shadow work? Somebody is holding our hands. This may be spiritual. It may be that you actually have somebody in your life that... Um, is with you while you do these hard explorations. And on the other side is freedom here. Um, and this tower, this ten of swords, this five of pentacles, um, wow, that's just a, I relate to that. Like I have revisited the feeling of the five of pentacles in this Mercury retrograde. Um, so what else do we have here? Well, awesome. Hidden influence is absolute happiness. This wild cat looking from this place of comfort, this majestic, powerful animal, and there's the sun rising. So this is the card, it's the most happy, fulfilled card in the deck. Um, so that is a hidden influence. Despite this loss, there is the pinnacle of happiness with you as well. And that takes me back to the, what the Oracle reminded us is like, start in your gratitude, start in the sun. I heard um, an indigenous speaker um, in a film that I just kind of glanced through and um, I think he was have a supai, but I could be wrong. So I just want to say that um, I believe he's have, have a supai, but he said that we feel the sun on our bodies and it lights up the sun inside of us and then it lights up the sun in all of our cells um, and that this is a, a part of what is a spiritual experience of living on this planet now the future my friends is a five of swords this is an opportunity to change how we live this is to me very much a message about our relationship to our planet and the kind of vitality of our planet here in this urban scene with sawed down trees, a young uh, buck, still got the spots, but a young buck grazing there. A, new, a possibility of moving beyond getting without integrity. Five of Swords is about selfishness. Um, and because, and I, because we are this generation of social justice inclined people, but we have been watching the world our whole lives move away from social justice into greater and greater inequity. 
Um, and then in other ways, like the very strong thread through that, and I've been a part of social justice work my whole life, the, the, and I see change. I see that the work I have been a part of doing has had an effect on the earth, even though we've definitely really gone dark as a, as a society, and, and we see authoritarianism and social injustice and a real trauma on our earth on a global scale. Um, so this to me is a message about that. And it's about letting go of how we've been operating and returning to the sun, um, this majestic relationship of, of awe with our planet. Um, and then it looks like where we've been coming from you know, Gen X is really, we had a reputation, right? Being couch potatoes, or just checking out. Um, Kurt Cobain epitomized Generation X and committed suicide. That kind of darkness in the art that is was also like quite cathartic. Um, okay, so I've I was inclined today to bring two decks to clarify. And so we're going to start with one card from Klimt. Let's see what each of these states of being, if we can get a little bit more information about each stage of this reading. Um, the tower here in our release. Yeah. This, this tower makes me think about a tree that falls down, but because you didn't cut it down. And it's time to move on from that, that happened. You know, you can sit there and shame yourself for not cutting the tree down. Maybe it fell on your house. Maybe it took something out, um, but I do that a lot. I procrastinate on things that I need to do and then I fear a tower. And so then I, that's often why I do stuff. It doesn't feel very good. Um, okay. So here we have the Knight of Swords with our tower. This is a truth coming in pretty hard, um, pretty fast. Um, this knight is riding backwards. The truth is about looking backwards on the past. Um, very militant, very much like ready for battle. Um, so when you do shadow work, that can be an approach to the past as like defensiveness. Um, this is telling me like, right, we're told to do shadow work. So put down your your weapons um, to look back there to do your shadow work. Um, that's what I what I get from that. Let's look at this Ten of Swords. All of these fireflies, I point them out because this card is about loss. It's about an ending. It's quite painful, but it is also about hope and the new cycle beginning, which would be a new ace of swords. Um, you start back at one. And if you take the number 10, and it is a one as well as a 10. So it's an ending and a beginning. So this is what we're embracing. Pardon me, my nose itches. Let's pull one card. Uh, eight of swords, feeling trapped up in your head. Why would we want to embrace this? It's not a very comfortable thing to embrace. This is definitely what shadow work can feel like. Um, we're promised release on the other side of this. We're, we can always remember that the underlying hidden influence here is the sun. But the Eight of Swords is it's a perspective of being trapped. You can actually walk out of there at any time. Um, it's a frame of mind. So is the Five of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles is an uncomfortable place where you feel left out. This little caterpillar is left out. There's even a predator out there and everybody else is up in their cocoon. And this little guy is abandoned alone outside. This is definitely about abandonment, um, poverty, a feeling of self-pity. Um, fives um, have a lot of that feeling of and you can see we end in a five of swords here. This is the future, which hopefully we can transform a little bit <laughs> as we clarify. But the five of pentacles, a card of abandonment. 
something about your past. It's like, and this is since this is a collective large scale generation reading, like I think of um, being born in 1970 as I was like, I was born into the expectation that equal rights amendment would pass. There was this incredibly like mainstream white feminist movement. There were lots of other civil rights movements that were happening. I would say that it was a time where they were not in integrating and where people were feeling torn between movements. I always felt torn between being gay and being a feminist uh, when I was young. Um, but in the 1970s, there was a lot of promise of social justice, of the end of poverty um, during the Carter administration. Then we had the rise of neoliberalism, of Reagan, of cutting back the social welfare state, of shaming everybody for participating in, a, in you know, our tax dollars, helping other people. Um, and so my whole life, my whole political life, I have felt um, abandoned by my elders who did not protect and um, bring forward the hope of this social justice. I think we are at another moment. Now we're the elders. Um, our generation has a lot of structural power. Um, this can be challenging because we have to give up structural power. We have to share. Um, so we need to deal with our abandonment issues because they cause us to hold too tight when we have something. And sometimes to hold tight to something abusive just because we're just so afraid of abandonment like a job that treats you like garbage that just makes you slave away all day and never tells you how wonderful you are like we're likely to cling to those kinds of things right the feeling of being trapped so know this this ending here right there's a lot of evidence out there that the world already ended <laughs> and we just need to face that fact um, so that we can move out of an eight of swords into a 10, into like accepting the ending um, and beginning to be constructive about how to go forward, right? To focus here on this young spotted buck instead of on the devastation that we have wreaked, which we cannot undo what has been done. We can simply change how we do everything going ahead. Sorry, I'm a little bit on my soapbox today. <laughs> it just feels like a strong message here. It's very dark. Um, well, good. So from our Five of Pentacles, this feeling of abandonment, we do have this Leo King. I see the Leo here quite a bit. Um, my moon is in Leo. Look at Leo in your chart. Um, the King of Wands, kings tend to be fixed. I, I learned this from Sassy Scorpion, so check her channel out. Um, but the King of Wands is the king of passion, the alpha male, get her done kind of person is quite a different energy from the Five of Pentacles. Um, we are revisiting this, right? So we're looking at our abandonment from the vantage point of the king of wands so from this mature passionate capable um, generation x you know we're grown up we're kings now we've we've reached uh, a level of, of experience at least if not wisdom um, with which to face our abandonment we and we have power um, to take us through the darkness yeah we can feel gratitude about what we have that keeps us stable and also you know this is a passionate king that fire that pushes us to do the scary work and to move out of self-pity into agency here so this is what we are revisiting as mercury again crosses back over what we just revisited our hidden influence we ought to become aware of this to me this is the kind of the heart of these readings, um, these two cards here is like, what, what are we revisiting and what should we know? What would help us if we knew this? And the tarot is suggesting that we know that we have the sun here, 
We have absolute happiness or capacity for it. Let's see what else. I almost want to look that card up because uh, this sun in this deck is a different um, kind of sun altogether. Well, hidden influence is also temperance. There's been a lot of this card showing up in my readings and in other readers' readings. This is a, you know, wait for the right concoction. Keep um, working those feelings, right? You're, it's a, you can see in this image, she's pouring water, which represents the emotions, into the mind, into the head of this statue, another vessel. So it's like finding this balance between mind and heart here. This is an alchemizing process. Um, I noticed that she has an apple. This makes me think of Eve. Um, there's an opportunity then in temperance to return to equilibrium that was disrupted um, by some kind of decision, just allegorically, that Eve, in her curiosity, ate that apple and was punished for that, for wanting to eat of the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, you know, I really relate to Eve. I'm a Scorpio, I'm not afraid of the dark. And I think Generation X here, as you're appearing on the table, you are um, willing and capable. You're a king of wands here, of going into the darkness um, and of remixing this. And so just to know that there is a process, it's slow. It, it, sometimes this is a card of patience, um, of getting the right mixture here. And so as you do this shadow work, as we as a generation look at how we responded to our sense of abandonment here. That maybe we responded by checking out, going into our cocoons, getting selfish and self-centered, maybe getting a little bit too into me, me, me kind of living. Um, we're, we're asked to know that we also have the sun um, and temperance at work here because we've lost something and we feel trapped so let me look at the sun card let's just see how this um deck thinks of the sun a little bit here so this is um the guardian of the night um deck although some illustrations for this deck okay when the sun appears in a reading, be prepared to be seen for your talents to be recognized and for your efforts to be acknowledged. You will feel a warm energy take over as those around you express admiration and support. The mighty sun also helps you see something that will benefit your situation. Something new that would typically be overlooked will shine and stand out so that you don't miss it. When you bask in the sun's light, you will feel bold and confident. You will have an urge to stand up to be seen. You are asked to trust your abilities and talents will open the door to new opportunities. However, be aware that the sun shines bright, and if you are operating with less than noble intentions, those too will be in the light. Mountain lions walk this planet with a knowing that they are sacred and command the attention of all who pass in their presence. They possess no need to tell the world of their greatness, they only need to stare at you from a tree limb to see it in your face. Call upon the authentic and powerful energy of the mountain lion when you need that added boost of confidence, and you too will feel as though you are the ruler of the forest. Yeah, so that's a very different, wonderful, totally appropriate reading of the sun here in this reading because there's so much darkness, there's so much shadow work and loss and endings here um and you're you're this king of wands reiterates that like no you're the king um come from this kind of alpha agent um i'm looking at you from my tree branch kind of power um this it this reminds you to just know your gifts and to trust that you have something to offer here in this moment. I, I really think we need to come out of our pity um, and our sort of feeling of that the world that we were promised when we were little has been abandoned and we've been abandoned with that dream. 
and it's time for us to reawaken that dream um, and to um, very patiently and methodically put this back into the mix, into the alchemical mix. And the sun card in this temperance, this naked woman, uh, remind us that this may cause us to feel vulnerable. It may be a naked feeling. The sun is very often has two little naked kids just letting their freak flags fly. Um, and so this is a kind of joyful vulnerability where it's safe to be vulnerable. This is, these cards here are actually much more cynical. Um, they're Gen, Gen X kind of um, darkness to them. Um, so there is a feeling of vulnerability in shadow work that that we we can do it. We are the king of wands. We are the, we have the sun. Um, we just kind of want to move through this journey. I think even though it ends up here in this five of swords here, so I really see this young animal, and I and this is coming up for me. I don't know about you, but. I need to return to my youthful visions of justice, of my relationship to my earth, like the abundance and of our earth. And yeah, I just feel like a lot of grief about the losses here. And, and this, these are like projects, these buildings are, this is about poverty that is the consequence of doing things uh, really fast and without thinking about the future. So, but we get to recoup from that. Here is a young animal eating there in the grass that has grown up after this tower, this apocalypse. So we get two cards here. Um, one is the moon, the future being unknown, very, um, also coming up quite a bit. It is something that we just need to kind of relax into. The sun currently is in Pisces, which is a watery, intuitive place of not knowing, of really resting. So if you've been going, going hard with Aquarian energy, there's a rest here in the future. Um, and there's also the lovers, um, a card of choice, but also a card of spiritual union, of achieving authentic, true love um, on a community level, on a global level is what I feel here. This can also be a very personal love relationship coming in for you in the future. So there's a rest. They're also in bed, <laughs> you know. Everybody's in bed here. We're going to get a rest. Uh, I don't know about you, but I need a rest. I've been sleeping like as many hours as I can, like going to bed at 730 this is coming in. This is what we have wrought. It looks full of mystery and like, I really, we don't really know what's gonna happen ahead, um, but it is love filled. It is high spiritual level here and, and there, it is restful somehow. Okay, interesting. Interesting journey we're on, Generation Xers. One last deck, Tarot the Old Path. I'm going to actually go ahead and pull three cards here from each for each of these places. I think we have had a complete message, so if you've heard enough, um, there can be a point where it feels repetitive and you can, you can take off, but, you know... I do get curious to learn more. I just saw the King of Wands again. So let's see if we can know a little bit more on each of these topics. So the tower, we're releasing the tower, uh, heartbreak, the three of swords, chaos, the five of rods, and magician. I recently learned from rustling around tarot. He's doing he's doing a class on tarot and it's free and you can just go to his site. Um, if you look at my subscriptions, you can find him here. The, the magician is the very um, raw, rough, masculine, self-focused, 
um, creator, uh, the manifester. Like this is a card of having all the tools, um, but it's a very um, basic kind of of creation. It's rough. It's visionary, um, and it can be selfish, and it can be um, forgetting to the feelings, forgetting love, forgetting the divine. Uh, those are stages that the masculine and the tarot narrative has to go through in order to um, have what is in the tarot a spiritual journey of transformation that includes the darkness, the shadow work. That, and that's what we're seeing here is that Generation X, we're on a part of a journey. We're leaving behind a tower. It hurt. It was a mess. Um... We want to look at the means, our participation in it. I feel like this reading is really calling our generation to take responsibility for our part in this tower, in this mess, in this loss, this Ten of Swords here. So we're feeling trapped. There's a lot of self-pity and kind of helplessness here. The cards are telling us that, in fact, we have a King of Wands, and the sun and temperance on the table as well as the lovers like we have power we have depth wisdom um, the right mix um, agency and we feel like this and this is of course this is weirdly our embrace this ten of swords eight of swords trapped in grief and so when it tells us to do shadow work it says Chill, go here, go into this darkness, go into these painful feelings, and you don't have to stay here forever. Let's find out a little bit more about that. We get the high priest, the hierophant, structure, um, spiritual process, the page of pentacles, very practical, very beautiful, earthly um, beginning. Here's the the Pope or the Hierophant here. Earth. Earth and Earth. And illusion. Here's the moon. We've got the moon in our future. So so this is just embracing the, un the unknown, um, what we cannot know and we cannot see um, yet. So, yeah, this is a process of grief. Um, it is divinely given to you. It is a gift. Um, Page of Pentacles and the Hierophant are telling me this is a gift. Um, even though it feels like, ow, it really hurts. Um, this is a gift and it is given to you from above. Um, and it is an opportunity for a young, to return to a young new start. And that's why we embrace grieving and dwelling in this grief. and. In our and really looking at our sense of feeling trapped and to be comfortable in the unknown in the darkness here i really see this figure here embracing this situation and this one guiding the divine watching over us as we go through this loss so we're revisiting what are we revisiting five of pentacles king of wands Uh, the Six of Pentacles comes up for me so much. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, the next step from Five of Pentacles. <clears throat> Maybe it'll come back in here, but um, I've been seeing that Six of Pentacles a lot. <laughs> okay, we get the Six of Cups. Seven of Swords. This is what we're revisiting. Page of Cauldrons. Hmm. Yeah, this is definitely childhood stuff. Six of Cups is youth. Um, it's definitely inner child work. Um, there has been theft, the thief in the night, dishonesty in the past, um, yours or somebody else's. I'm getting the feeling here it was that this is the Five of Pentacles is resulting from childhood trauma. Um, and right now... The King of Swords here. It's a very gender ambiguous King of Swords. I 
often had initially used to mistake this for the Queen of Swords, but this is coming through to me as a parental figure, an authority figure, as the Hierophant here in our embrace. So it's like knowing something about how structure and authority have um, in the past been lacking in transparency um, and kind of this is such an interesting six of cauldrons because it's an unhealthy connection here um, it's often a card of soulmates of um, yeah so and here's the inner kid here real suspicious real like this is what we in this time right now this mercury retrograde and now direct, but in the shadow of what it revisited. Um, does that make sense? Um, it took, I didn't understand it until recently, and somebody explained it really well. So, so Mercury appears to go backwards, and it, and it crosses all these planets. It crossed Venus, it crossed Saturn, and it crossed Jupiter. Um, maybe more, but those are the ones I know for sure. And then it goes back and revisits them again to return to the original starting point before this sort of trip down memory lane that it went to. And now it's, then it will go forward in mid-March. Um, so this here, this abandonment issue, this hurt, this sort of butt soreness about, um, like we can't trust our government, right? Mistrust. We, we want to look at that. Um, it's causing us to be disempowered and victimy um, for good reason. Um, there is a lot of powerlessness um, that we must accept about our relationship to our government. But I think there also needs to be a sense of knowing our power, right? The sun, this is hidden from us. Um, temperance, to have like a more balanced understanding, a more mature understanding of what happened. This is our shadow work here. This, these two cards that we've been clarifying, the Ten of Swords and the Five of Pentacles. There's a lot of information here. Uh, a grief and a sense of betrayal um, and abandonment that has led us as a generation to be mistrustful. And I really think that when we look at revisiting the decision that we made when we were kids to be mistrustful, like to see his little face or her little face, very suspicious, crabby little kid here. <laughs> That's a story that we told ourselves, Generation X. We can tell ourselves a different story. This can be the story. And I think like, because there's so much change happening in the world, we are being called to remember the joy of youth. Remember the dream that you had for the world when you were little and grown-ups said, that's not realistic. Or maybe your, your grown-ups were like a part as, of the social justice movement as, as mine were. You know, there's a reason why we're, we're children, a generation associated with being idealistic artists and, and social, social justice workers. Um, and it has been a long life of not getting that. But here we are, um, beginning anew, the Fool. Yeah, we had the Ten of Swords and the Tower. So we get this little goofball starting off on a new journey. You, young energy again, putting down a burden. I feel like that burden is these old stories and ideas about how the world works. Um, and that we shouldn't be the fool. Like we shouldn't have these um, naive visions of, of peace and love. Um, that we were born from young people, the 60s revolutionaries who, who believed in peace and love. Um, and there is the, de the devil here, temptation, um, hidden here. So this is how many of us have coped. Right, and this is in this burden of addiction, dissociation, um, being um, giving up. I think that's that is here under the sun, right? So that's the these are the barriers to being a fool and going off on these leaps of faith is 
you know, some hard years, my friends, my Gen X buddies. Um, so, yeah, this is not an easy journey right now. I feel that with you. I feel that. Yeah, I feel the moon. I feel the unknown. I feel my perfectionism about how it should be in contrast to how it is. And I don't know what to do. Um, the moon. I feel this. This moon in the future. Um, we're, so let's clarify the future. We also have the lovers, this beautiful ideal vision of getting to be yourself, getting to be loved, this divine spiritual love in the future. And a rest. <laughs> uh, the Empress, our earth renewed. Strength, knowing that we can be our best selves, that we can tame our animal, our base na natures. I mean, why would we, animals are, but the, the lion, it's like a predator and, and the feminine is controlling that lion. And in the narrative of the major arcana, the divine feminine is warning the divine masculine um, that they need to rise to their higher self. Um, in the strength card. And this is, um, you can see a healing, the caduceus there, infinity over her head. Um, this is another card of Leo. There's a lot of Leo here. We've got a king of wands, leadership, the sun, and strength. Um, lots of, of Leo coming through for me here. Uh, and a little bit of anxiety and insomnia, a nine of swords here in the future. So, and this seems like so normal, it's gonna take a while. We get the Knight of Pentacles, the slow poke knight underlying here. Um, wow. Under this deck we get the high priestess intuition, ability to navigate the darkness and to trust your intuition. And Klimt gives us the fool Quite a weird fool, isn't it? Like a perfect fool for Gen X, like like an old guy that feels like really naked and anxious. Yeah. So there's there's more under there that goes with this message of still needing to do the shadow work of look at how we've been a part of creating um this this tent like it's clear like we need to take responsibility for our part in this we need to rethink the story that we told ourselves that gave us permission for taking part in this um if you're dealing with addiction you need to you need to know that you have addiction and you need to deal with that temptation this may i'm guessing some people here are the sun is blotted out because you have learned to dissociate as a strategy for living in the world. And the disappointment that the world wasn't what we were promised when we were, when we were born in the 70s. And yeah, like coming to terms with not knowing, um, but also, and the anxiety that comes with that, right? That not knowing is the moon. But also that there is this incredible feminine power that brings health, and rising to our best selves. To me, I keep seeing this card is very much about um, rising to your best self, the strength um, to tame your baser nature, the selfishness, your addiction, your self-pity. Um, we need to, to do that here, Generation X. And with that comes the promise from the Oracle of release of being able to let go. That's what I see now. It's like it's letting go of the story that this kid told herself or himself or themselves about how the world was and not to trust and not to hope. But we can let go of that. You know, we can we can get this release. We can return to the young buck, that young animal was just arrogant ready to live and thrive doesn't really care about all of this you know this is nature resurging in the future the empress
promises us this. There's a lot of evidence that our planet is a lot smarter and more resilient than we understand yet. Um, what we can do is this. This is our job, to be our best selves participating in healing our society and our earth and our relationships to one another and our earth. That's what we can do. And in order to do that, my friend, you have some shadow work to do. So you are somewhere on this journey already. You may be just at the tower. You may have already done a lot of the shadow work and be ready for this future with the lovers and the empress and strength. Um, I'm going to guess this is really the sensation of menopause, <laughs> if you're a woman, and the sensation of Aquarius, all these planets in Aquarius. Um, there's a lot of insomnia, um, and we have responsibilities and stress, so get some sleep. There's a moon nap, and here, there's get some sleep, take care of you, be with the one, trust that you'll be with the one, um, but yeah, rest, rest, and remember to just, you just need to know the sun is right here. This is the true you, and this is the true possibility for our planet and for for us um, as a people on this planet, Generation X. This looks like it feels really good. So enjoy the journey. I'm right here with you. I am, I did a, a metal dog tarot reading. I mean, a metal dog reading for people born in 1970. Quite different, much more specific, much um, the same message of like, revisiting your childhood visions. Um, our Generation X message here, more broadly, is you told yourself a story. There's some self-pity moving on from that. But the same message of reclaiming that young vision that you um, and your broken heart gave up. So revisit that broken heart, rethink it. And um, there's a great deal of hope for us in the future if we're able to do that. I hope this helped and I appreciate you being here. Thank you.